This is the uh, first video on learning the Bach Prelude in C major, Well Tempered Clavier. There is a big difference between memorizing and learning. Sometimes people will memorize something and say, I've learned it. No, you, you don't have any idea what's there when you memorize something. Probably, unless you've gone through and you understand a lot of the principles of, of music, of the language of music. Now, you've been through the, uh, the written portion on manuscript paper. Now, let's get to doing something with it at the piano. Well, okay, there's your first chord. Very basic, very simple. C major, these are duplicated here. And then you go to a D minor, we've explained that D is the root. A step below the root is the minor seventh. And uh, let's see, what else? D minor, we got the minor third on top as the uppermost note, and the minor seventh as the lowermost note. And the minor third and the minor seventh are the characteristic intervals of the D minor seven chords. Then we go to the G dominant. All right. Uh, B is the major third of the G dominant chord. We've, I've explained all this, but I'm just reviewing it a little bit. And B to F is a tritone. Well, to make it a, a, a understand, you got to bring this down an octave or bring this up an octave. So anyway, there's your tritone. Pull step, pull step, pull step, a tritone. That tritone is the most important interval in the dominant. Uh, it, either of these notes may function as the major third or the minor seventh. Or this could be the major third, and this could be the minor seventh. And you have to decide which is the one that's most logical. All right, let's say that we use this as a major third. Well, that's major third of D flat. Well, does that make sense for the what's in there in the music? Not in the least. So if we use this as a major third, G dominant. Now, we don't really need a fifth. That's just basic. Like a root is basic, but we need the major third and the minor seventh to, as as a characteristic interval, to determine or to uh, show the dominant on on G. Then right back. Okay, now to understand the function of every single note, the root, the major third, the fifth, the root, the major third. The minor seventh, the root, the, the fifth, the root, the minor third, the major third, the fifth, the root, the, uh, the fifth, the minor seventh, and the same thing uh, there as we started with. That's pretty much it. Okay? But that's not all, because actually that almost is memorized. But it's good to know what's there, because in knowing what is there in this simple form, which this is not going to be this simple in the in the succeeding um, four bar um, sections throughout the whole piece. It gets very complex, but learn this, know what is here. Okay, the other thing, let's just um, forget about Bach for a moment, but realize that what Bach has done is played um, uh, C major, which is one to two, one to two, then to five, then to one. So one, one, two, five, one. There's your basic pro uh, progression. And I've explained that on the written portion with Roman numerals. One, two, here's that seventh chord, you've got to include the seventh. <coughs> and five, is the seventh chord getting to the, the seventh and back to one. If you want to include the upper root, you can. Okay, now, improvisation is choices. And we should improvise on this in the most basic,
basic manner that we can. We can go one, two, five, one. Starting with the fifth on the top. Or we can do this. Two, five, nine, and then one. With fifth on the top fitting. Again, that's different, but it's not terribly nice sounding. But it's a good drill. Just in drill is doing it, you know, going through the motions. Okay, so one. Now then, what can we do? We can put the root on top. One, two, then five, one. The first part of that was not bad sounding, was it? Pretty nice. But then everything skips seem to make much sense musically. Well, what can we do? One, two, five. Now, we don't need the root here. We've got the root here. Put it in if you like to. And then one. Now, work with just that much for a little bit. Try it in a different key. But let's continue in this key. Are we there for the fifth? Now put the third on top. Now the um, we've got the uh, root here. We don't really need it. Now we've got the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. And then we don't need the root here. Again, put it if you like. We've got three notes here. <laughs> it's not a triad because the chord has. It has the root, the minor seventh, and the major third. That minor seventh indicates it as a seventh chord, which is a four note chord, we're not a triad. Just be, now don't get fooled by that. And then, uh, try to get back to the major third on top. That was a little bit of improvisation because I wanted to get back to the root on top. I mean the third on top. Well, let's see what you can do about that. Alright, now then, this is not a tritone. Remember, this was a tritone, but not this. Now then, if we go to a dominant, we can go to a tritone up here. And then, ending with a third on top. We don't have to end the third on top, but if that's your, your plan here, do so. Well, you've worked with these different positions of the C major track. Now let's work with different what we call inversions. These are positions, these are inversions. And let's work with this. Alright, let's put the third on the bottom. We don't generally double the third in in our chords, but let's let's not worry about that. Alright, there's a third. Now we can go to the a uh, super tonic, then the dominant, then the back to the tonic. Can you handle that? <laughs> if you've never done it before, this may be very complex, and yet this is the most basic one, two, five, one of the entire prelude. All right, one, two, five. Now then, one, two, five, one. One, two, five, one, one, one with the third on the bottom, to two with the third on the as the lowermost, then to five. Well, isn't that a nice little progression of notes when we use the third on the bottom for the tonic, third on the bottom for the supertonic, then the root. And then finishing with the root. All right, let's try one. Now the two. If we go here, that's F major. We want D minor. So what are we going to do? Now that's a different sound than simply F major. That's a D minor chord. That's a D minor seven. 
seventh chord with a minor third and a minor seven. That's simply F major, F A seven. But can you see that there's a definite relationship between D minor and F major? Now, there's the D minor seven chord. There's D minor, there's F major. We must have the D if we're going to call it a D minor seven chord. And then G dominant, and then tonic. Here's another little twist to that one. All right. Now then, we can add the fifth. That's right. Now then, we can do that, or we can do this. Isn't that a gorgeous chord? We now we really have the root. We don't have a third. We got a fifth, seventh, ninth. 11. This is a G11 chord, or what we call a G9-11 chord. With 11 chord, we don't generally include the third. It's a little thick, as we say. But if you like it, add it. But look at that. Everything is a third. But we take, took this from the supertonic, which we had the third on the bottom, to the dominant 9-11, and then so, one, two, five, one. Play around with that a little bit. All right, let's do the fifth. One, two, five. How about this now? Whoa, wasn't that rather pretty? Now, I've got the tonic chord again, just according to the formula, one, two, five, one. But now I put the third on the bottom. I took the third out of here. I like this sound. That's okay. Well, good. Do you see what we're doing here? We're practicing different positions of the chord and taking one, two, five, one. Then we're taking different positions, but with different functions of the chord in the left, in the bottom part. This functions as the third of the of the C major chord. This functions as the fifth of the C major chord. So one, two, that functions as the minor third of the D minor. And then this is the 911, or you could resolve it, as they say. Ooh, pretty. And then, or here's another one. One, Isn't that sort of an interesting? It, it makes good sense, but it's different. And when you do something that's different, you're learning. This is the importance of doing this. Do it in a different key. Try and key of F major, G major, do the, the easy ones. I'm not going to do it here, you do it. But, but doing these things and going more than what I've, what I've done, explained here, means that you're learning something. And learning is the name of the game, not memorizing procedures, not memorizing um, theorems, not memorizing uh, notes, not memorizing, yeah, that's, that's memorized. But when you work at it, the same progression and doing something different with it, oh boy, all of a sudden things become clear. Things, the lights turn on, so to speak. And then when you come back to this, you have an idea of what Bach has done. He has done exactly the same thing as I showed you here, taking different positions of the chord and different inversions, so we say, or what? These are, you can use single notes down here. Add the fifth if you want to, the upper note. There's C major with third on the bottom. There's C major with fifth on the bottom. Uh, what more can I say? Work with it. And basically have fun with it. Enjoy yourself that you're actually doing different things and seeing that some things that you do don't, don't please you. Let's put it that way. Some other things will surprise you. How nice. You've done something really quite nice. 
the more you practice this type of thing, the more you learn. I mean, that's, it should be obvious. Enjoy, and we'll talk later. Bye-bye.